Inflation ticked slightly higher this past month and is higher than 2008. Interest rates are several hundred points above 2008 levels, but gold has been on a slight downtrend this entire year. Are things with the economy getting better? And what can we expect going forward? Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. The gold price chart over the last 50 years has always fascinated me. Right before we head into some economic issue, at any given point in time, we start to see gold's price start to climb. It's almost like gold is warning us that trouble is ahead. The gold price is like the canary in the coal mine. When the gold price starts going up, people are sensing things are not great. I bring this up because gold has hit new all-time highs multiple times in the last three years, and it hasn't receded that much. I find this really interesting, especially with how well they say the economy is doing. For the majority of U.S. history, the price of gold was fixed. It wasn't until 1974 when gold was made legal to own again in the United States were we able to see and chart its price in the quote-unquote free market. Since 1974, gold has been on a tear upwards, and for the most part, hasn't looked back. If you look at the 50-year gold price chart, you can see how gold shot up in the early 80s, then dropped in value and remained pretty stagnant for almost 20 years. But in the early 2000s, it starts to climb again. Once 2008 arrived, gold neared its 1980 highs, then exceeded them and didn't return to those levels. If things with the economy are so good, why hasn't gold dropped? There are many factors that cause a high gold price, but I would argue the biggest factor is fear. Fear. Fear drives people to the US dollar and to gold. A strong dollar makes a weak gold. But when people realize the dollar isn't what it once was, or when they finally realize that all fiat is horrible and the US dollar is just slightly less horrible, they will flock to a safe haven asset like gold. The dollar has had mild strength this year on the back of higher yields. Despite lower inflation, higher interest rates, and a stronger dollar, gold has held up remarkably well. If you were to tell me the dollar has been on a two month rally, then ask me, What's the gold price? I would have said gold was in the 1800s, if not slightly lower. But that has not been the case. Gold has been flat, leaning towards a slight negative decline in this time. But because it hasn't dropped dramatically, this tells me that there is still a massive demand for gold from both the institutions and individuals buying it. Some of these institutions are central banks, who are still printing massive amounts of fiat currency, contributing to the problems that we are facing. While the dollar has been trending upward since July, its overall performance has been mostly flat, if not also on a downward trend with gold. We could see the dollar start falling very soon as it hits this peak. A lower dollar commonly equates to a higher gold price as these two are often inversely related. I like to look at other things which could indicate a higher gold price. Troubling signs with the economy, for instance. One of these is inflation. Inflation jumped slightly higher this month, 3.8%. Not as much as a year ago, but its downward trend has reversed. In 2008, grading agencies were reluctant to downgrade America's credit score. Even after the crash had happened, very few lowered their rating. Just this last August, with no economic crash happening, Fitch lowered the United States credit score from AAA to AA+, and Moody's lowered the credit rating of 10 small and mid-sized U.S. banks and placed several big Wall Street names on negative review. This has huge implications for the markets and people's trustworthiness of our economy. The housing market has sidelined a lot of potential buyers. Higher interest rates combined with near record pricing 
keeps housing unaffordable for the average buyer. According to MarketWatch, home buyers now need $117,000 annual income to afford a medium price home in the United States. This figure is up nearly 20 grand from just last year. 61% of folks reported that they are living paycheck to paycheck, according to CNBC. This number is up over last year, where it was just 59%. Folks in the survey cite inflation as the reason, and that very well might be the reason. But inflation was higher last year than it is now. You might be thinking, well, that's just impoverished folks taking the survey. In the same report, 44% of people earning over $100,000 per year are reportedly living paycheck to paycheck too. Another powder keg tied into this whole picture is student loans. Student loan repayments were paused due to 2020. Rent was paused too for a lot of individuals as well. Rents resumed a long time ago, but student loan interest resumed just this month on September 1st. Student loan repayments resume on October 1st. Why do I see this as a powder keg? There is $1.75 trillion in student loan debt. Here's a graphic on how much resides in each category. 6.4 million borrowers are in school with $118 billion. 1.6 million borrowers are in a grace period totaling 41 billion. Only a half million borrowers are currently repaying their loans and this accounts for only $16 billion of this total debt. 3.1 million borrowers have a deferment totaling $113 billion. Now here are the troubling numbers. 24 million borrowers owing $968 billion. The bulk of this total overall debt have their account in forbearance. 5.1 million borrowers are an outright default with $112 billion of this debt. Remember when I said 61% of folks are living paycheck to paycheck currently? How are they going to start repayments on October 1st when they don't have the money for it? They will need to cut spending, which will lower the economy. And some might have already cut spending and will simply be unable to pay at all. I'm sure many of those with student loans are waiting for Biden to declare a debt jubilee, but that cost is not free. The debt doesn't just go away, it's transferred. Everyone in the nation would be saddled with that bill, including the borrower. Free stuff is definitely not free. The system was broken in 2008, and the gold price reflects this break. If things improved at all, why didn't the gold price fall back to its early 2000 levels like we saw in 1980? By the way, the 2008 economic crisis wasn't a surprise to many people. That's why gold was growing so much leading up to it. Then, in 2011, gold hit new all-time highs of 1920. Then, in 2011, gold hit its new all-time high of $1,920. October 2012 was the beginning of gold slide. Did it drop back down to its pre-2005 prices? No, it fell, but bottomed out around $1,100 before bouncing back big time. The price averaged $1,300 from 2013 to mid-2019. Then it broke out and has remained above $1,600 since August 2020. Gold hit a new all-time high in March 2022 of $2,080, and it has remained fairly stable since. That's what I like about gold. Gold is a BS indicator. If its price is up and your country's leaders are telling you everything is fine and the economy is doing great, you're more than likely being lied to. And what is gold if not the people buying it? People understand things are not good. One reason of many, its price has remained above 2008 levels for so long. I think there is a lot of support for a gold bull market in the months and years to come. And this brings us to the sponsor of this video. I've been very fortunate to have some amazing sponsors on this channel, and this week I have a new one that is really special. Today's video is brought to you by West Red Lake Gold. Stock ticker WRLGF. If you're into investing in equities, 
it is an alternative to owning physical gold. Now, what makes West Red Lake gold so great? There are a few things. Gold was first discovered on the shores of Red Lake in Ontario, Canada in 1925. Since 1925, there have been 28 operating mines and 28 million ounces of gold produced at this location. This region produces some very high grade gold and is home to many gold mining companies. Next is ownership. The largest owners of West Red Lake Gold are Sprott Resource Lending with nearly a quarter of the shares and billionaire mining mogul and co-founder of Goldcore Newmont, Frank Justra, with nearly a 12% stake. Together, one of the best asset management companies and one of the best mining entrepreneurs owns 35% of this company. Second is who runs the company. The director, Duncan Middlemiss, is the former president and CEO of Westome Gold Mines, a company which went from a market cap of $73 million to $2.3 billion in just nine years. Shane Williams is the CEO of West Red Lake Gold. He was the COO for Skinna, which traded for a dollar per share in February 2019, but in 2020 traded for $16 per share, something he was instrumental in bringing about. He also worked for Eldorado Gold with mining operations all over the world. These individuals have built many gold mining projects from the ground up, but not only built them, ran them successfully and increased their valuation, just like what they plan on doing with West Red Lake Gold Mines. Except in this case, they are not building from scratch. West Red Lake Gold acquired the mine and state-of-the-art mill from a previous owner. That owner basically stopped right at the 99-yard line due to 2020 and mismanagement of funds. They had the facility built and nearly ready to go. Their mill can go through 800 tons per day, and there aren't a lot of mills in this region. So other companies would either have to feed their gold into the West Red Lake Gold Mill or build their own. Due to the cost of building a mill, most will probably run the production through West Red Lake Gold's mill, which is cash flow for them. The previous company at these mines reached a market cap of $1.2 billion Canadian before it was forced to sell. West Red Lake Gold is worth $112 million Canadian with $18 million in cash and zero debt. This is an enterprise value $69 million US. The previous owners mismanaged the property and their valuation was 10 times higher. The market can decide again to revalue this asset under West Red Lake Gold at the same $1.2 billion market cap, which is 16 times increase from its current value. Except this time, there are some bigger differences. A far better management team and a $350 million infrastructure investment. Now, just because something was valued at a certain level before, certainly doesn't mean it will be valued there again. So we would have to look at the total facility liquidation cost, the scrap cost, the replacement cost. What would it cost to rebuild this facility from scratch? Estimates are near $700 million, according to Frank Justra. And you just can't measure rebuilds in terms of dollars. You have to look at time too. To get this level of a facility, the estimate it would take five to 10 years. I mentioned this before, but they also have invested $350 million into significant infrastructure at one of the largest mines at Madsen. Madsen has 1.6 million ounces of indicated gold and nearly 400,000 ounces of inferred gold. A lot of gold mining companies go bankrupt before they finish building their facilities due to mismanagement of funds, or they run into some problem which cannot be solved. West Red Lake Gold didn't have any unsolvable problems, and this is what makes this company so appealing to me. It's a small cap gold mining company with established infrastructure, both above and below ground. It's one thing to have a mill above ground. It's another to have many of the tunnels dug out and ready to go. They have great management team with experienced individuals who know how to build and run a mine from start to finish. And equally important, the mines are located in a historic high-grade gold mining location with big potential. 
West Red Lake Gold is certainly something to look into if you're looking to invest in a gold miner. As with any investment, please do your own due diligence to see if it's something worthwhile for you. Factor in timing and pricing to see if it's a good time to jump in to the market. I would like to thank West Red Lake Gold for sponsoring this video. Your time is your most precious asset, and I appreciate you spending it here with me. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.